10. What relation is a doorstep to a doormat? All right, good question. Round each answer to the nearest tenth if necessary. Cross out the box containing each answer. When you finish, write the letters from the remaining boxes in the spaces at the bottom of the page. So let's look at what we have here. All right, so when we get a right answer, we cross out that box, and then whatever letters are left, we write, write each letter in a box. So if the word do here is left, we don't write do in one box. We put one letter, we would put the D there and the O here. All right, as you can tell, we have right angles, so this is going to be the Pythagorean theorem. Again, I think our space here is kind of limited, so I would recommend getting a line sheet of paper so that we can keep our work neat and using that to show the work um, and just staple it at the end. So the directions <clears throat> say for each right triangle, find the length of the side that is not given. Something important here, we're going to round to the nearest tenth, right? So tenth is dimes, that means that is one number after the decimal. So I will do one for you and then I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on the word problems at the bottom. Our formula that we've come to know, love, and hopefully memorize by this point is going to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And you want that anytime you're dealing with a right triangle and we need to find a missing side length. Okay, Pythagorean theorem, beautiful stuff. All right, so let's look at A here. We have a right triangle. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out our A, B, and C. Here's our right triangle box, our right angle box, and we take our handy dandy arrow and we point and we find this is our hypotenuse. So this is our C. Doesn't matter what you make A and B. I'll go ahead and do A here and a little B over here. And now we're all set. At this point it's a plug and chug, solve it. So we have A is X. We are going to do X squared plus B squared and B is six. So we'll do six squared equals C, which is over here. So that's going to be eight squared. All right, so the first thing we do, take care of all of our squares. We have X squared. Six squared is 36. If you don't have these things memorized, that's okay. You can always use your calculator. Eight squared, it's not eight times two. Don't put 16. It's eight times eight, which is 64. Ooh, let me get rid of that. Hang on a second, guys. You see, I need to, uh, can't connect to iCloud. All right, back to work. You cannot take a square root until you get rid of anything on the same side as the x squared. In some cases, like if we go ahead and look here towards b, c is going to be x, right? If I skip over here and do that. So then c would already be by itself. But in a, a case like a or d or e, most cases, you are going to have to get rid of something first. So in this case, we got we need to get rid of our plus 36. And how do you get rid of a plus 36 or a positive number? You do the opposite, you subtract it. So we have our line. We're gonna subtract 36 on both sides. All right, there we go. Positive 36, negative 36, those go goodbye and we have our x squared left over. And then 64 minus 36, let's get our calculator and clear that out. All right, so we have 64 minus 36, we get 28. Okay, so x squared equals 28. 
Once you have your x squared by itself, and we've solved the other side, now you may do the square root. That is the opposite of squaring something. So to get x all by itself, because we don't want to know what x squared equals. We want to know just the x. So we find the square root of both sides, and we have x equals, now I will tell you 28, not a perfect square. So let's go down here and figure out, I already have 28 in there, so my x squared button, which is above your nine in the calculator, is gonna give me an irrational number, right? A decimal that keeps going on forever. So 5.291, blah, blah, blah. Now we, remember, round to the nearest tenth. Well, the tenth in this case is two, but look what's right behind it, a nine. So what is that nine going to do? How are we gonna round that? Well, if it's five and above, you give it a shove, very good. So that's not gonna be 5.2 anymore, it's gonna become 5.3. So our answer for A is 5.3. And we are talking centimeters, right? So your label would be centimeters. Can you see that decimal? There it is. No. All right, so now what does this mean for if we're going to answer the riddle down below? Well, I will scroll down. Again, all the ink comes with me. I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to look for 5.3. Where? Oh, there it is. Okay. And remember, they said you want to um, oh, you want to get rid of it. So we want to cancel out the answer. We're not going to write that answer. We're going to cancel it out. So we're going to scribble that out. Okay. The ones that are left unscribbled, that's what you write each letter in each box. So we got 5.3 as an answer, and we took it out. Okay. So let's scroll back up to the top here. All right, I'm not gonna answer the others uh, for this top section. I think it's pretty clear. You guys have done this numerous times, so you should be okay with it. If you have any questions about A through F, you can ask a teacher, but try and do it on your own first so we can see where you're getting stuck because not everybody gets stuck in the same place. I'm gonna clear out this and I'm gonna scroll down here to these word problems because what I've found is the word problems are trickier than when they just give you a plain old right triangle. Um, number two here, Yuki just bought a big screen TV set. The screen has a diagonal measure of 40 inches. If the screen is 32 inches wide, how high is it? So what they want to know here is what is this side, the height? They want to know what is X. So if it's a TV, in this case they gave us a rectangle, so we can put our right angle there, go across, so this is going to be our C. A, B, or A, B, doesn't matter. But I think you guys can solve that one at this point, not too tricky. All right, let's look at, I'll leave that up there, let's look at number three. 25 foot ladder is leaned against a wall. If the base of the ladder is seven feet from the wall, how high up? Again, just to demonstrate, if it's a 25 foot ladder, this is an important piece right here, and it's leaning against a wall. So that's gonna be your diagonal, it's gonna be 25. We've already learned, I hope, that our diagonal is always C. That's our hypotenuse. We have the wall. And then we have the base, and we know that the base of the ladder, because it tells us, is seven feet from the wall. So this is your seven, and they want to know how high up it goes. So there's your X. I've told you, and I know other teachers have, that whenever you have a building or a tree or a flagpole or anything that stands vertically, and you have the ground, that's where you're going to have your right angle. So you can draw your arrow, and sure enough, our diagonal 25 here, our ladder is going to be C. All right, let's look at number four. As Greg swam across an 80 meter river, the current carried him 30 meters downstream. How far did he swim? So it's 80 across, and it gives us that right here. That's your 80. And 
the current carried him 30 meters downstream. So that's down here. And they want to know how far he swam. So we're going to figure out this diagonal because if this is 80 feet across, what they're saying is uh, Greg got in. So let's draw Greg. Hey, Greg, how you doing, dude? Okay, so he's going to get in here and he's going to swim across. But if you're in a river, right, and the water is moving, it's really hard to swim directly across with this current. That's what all those squiggly lines are. So he's going to end up downstream 30 meters. So we need to figure out, well, what is this? diagonal that he actually swam. So again, there's your right angle. There's my arrow. So this diagonal here, that's going to be your C. I hope that helps because um, this could be a little tricky. So 80 meters across, that's going to be our base. Uh, carried him 30 meters downstream, that's going to be our height. And then the diagonal is going to be how far he swam. So you have your A, your B, and your C. Okay. Number five, the mast of a sailing ship is 20 feet tall. A rope is stretched 26 feet from the top of the mast to a cleat on the deck of the ship. How far is the cleat from the base of the mast? Well, if you don't know boats, this could be a really tricky problem. So let's go ahead. Here's our boat. It's not exactly a pirate ship, but we'll go with it. And a mast, if you've ever seen a boat, like a pirate ship or anything like that, the mast is the really tall pole in the middle of the boat. It has the biggest sails connected to it and all that stuff. So they're saying there's a mast here and... A, so the mast is 20 feet tall. Let's go ahead and write that in. 20 feet. Beautiful. And a rope is stretched from the top of the mast to a cleat on the deck. So a cleat, and you know Miss Walker can draw, so don't be bad. The cleat is what you tie a rope off to. It looks kind of like a T-shape. And you can take your rope and tie it to this cleat so that the rope doesn't just, you know, move in the wind or anything it's it's tied very tightly and so they said that this rope is 26 feet from the top so this number right here is going to be your 26 and then they said well how far is the cleat from the base of the mast so they want to know x this is your x so can you guys and i'm going to do it in a different color so it's really obvious here's your right triangle you have your height, sorry that's a little squiggly, you have your base, and you have your diagonal or your hypotenuse. This is your right angle, so there's your C. So your A can be 20, and I know it's kind of crowded, so I'm going to put it, let's look right here, your X is your B, right because that's this baseline right here and then your 26 is your C so I think you guys can solve this from now alright number six each side of an equilateral that's important triangle measures 12 centimeters find the height of the triangle so if each side is 12 and the bottom see how they split this up that means this side is 6 and the other side of your dotted line, this side is 6, because 6 plus 6 is 12. That's why it's equilateral, meaning same side. So these guys are the same amount. We don't want the whole 12 because the big triangle is not a right triangle. But if we take the height, change colors here, if we take this height, this dotted line, that gives us our right triangle. Do you guys see that? That's why they made it there. So we can work on this side. We have our right triangle. There's your C. So that means we can make our base B and our height, the, what we're looking for is A. Okay, so that's going to be our X. 
So A is X, B is 6, C is 12. Go ahead and solve for X. Remember, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So you have to do a little bit of math. All right, last question, number seven. Two jets left an airport at the same time. One traveled east at 300 miles per hour, and the other traveled south at 400 miles per hour. How far apart were the jets at the end of the hour? So we have one guy, right? So let's say the airport is here, and we have one jet. Actually, if it's going east, it would make more sense if we put it on the other part. Watch this. We're going to go over here, right? Because never eat soggy waffles. East is going to my right. So one guy goes east 300 miles per hour. And we only want one hour, so there's no math to do to that. It's just the straight up, because see, at the end of an hour, so it's just the 300. And then the other traveled south at 400, so south is down. So I'm going to try and do this sideways. Oof. All right, so we have 300, 400, and then they want to know how far apart. So this jet is here after an hour, this jet is here after an hour, and they want to know how far apart is that. There's your X. So this is my right triangle, because remember, whenever they go directions, east or south, south or west, so on and so forth, that gives you your right angle. So we draw our arrow, and that makes X C. So you can make this guy A, and this guy, ooh, right in the B sideways. Here we go. There she is. All right. So we have A is 300, B is 400, C is X. You square them. And in this case, because C is already by, you know, X is by itself over here, you can square them, add them together, and then do the square root. That's everything I have for this one. Uh, I think the word problems have been explained pretty easy, but if you have any questions, just ask your teacher.